Are you trying to decide which music licensing platform out there is the best choice for you? If that's the case, stick around because in today's video, we'll look at the three most popular options out on the market, we'll compare them and we'll look at the pros and the cons of each of those options. Coming up. Hey there underwater filmmakers, what's going on? It's great to see you back here on the channel. Recently, ever since I got back from my trip to the Maldives, I have been working on a short film with all the material that I've collected throughout those two weeks that I spent in the Maldives. Now, as with every video project, you're always in need of some good music and some sound effects to make it into a nice, complete, finished product. Now, I do have a music licensing platform that I've been working with and that I would consider my favorite one, but I do always like to, you know, um, have a look at all the options out on the market from time to time to see whether the option that I'm using currently is still the best one for my needs. So in today's video, we'll be looking at the three most popular options when it comes to music licensing out on the market. These options are Artlist, epidemic sound and audio. To be able to compare the three sides to one another, I will look at three different categories. First of all, we'll look at the choice of music and the sound effects, the sheer number of tracks and assets that are available on the sites. Secondly, we'll look at the ease of use. How easy is it to use those sites and how easy is it to find the, um, the suitable music that you're looking for. And lastly, we'll look at the price plans, the subscription options that these platforms offer. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into the first category and the choice of music and sound effects. So why don't we start off with audio, which is the platform that I have been using for the past nearly two years now. Audio states on their website that they have got something like 6,000 plus audio tracks and somewhere around 30, 35,000 plus sound effects available within their library. That's not a bad amount, um, but if you look at the other um, sites, you'll see that they do offer quite a bit more. Looking at Epidemic Sound, they offer something like 40,000 plus tracks on their site and uh, somewhere around 90,000 sound effects. That's a quite a bit more compared to the audio side. Now, if you look at Artlist, then that one really shines when it comes to the sheer amount of, uh, of songs, sound effects and other assets that they've got on their site. Now, they state on the website that they've got something like 400,000 plus um, assets that you can access with one of their subscriptions. Now we have to be a little careful here though because Artlist is not just purely music and sound effects. They also have other assets that you uh, can license in, in a package. They've also got stock footage that is counted towards the um, total amount that they, um, that they mention on their website. They've also got templates. They've also got plugins, um, apps. So it's a whole lot of um, different things that they put under the same kind of roof, if you want, um, to come up with that number of, um, of 400 plus thousand um, individual assets that you can license through their site. So if you want to make your decision solely based on the amount of tracks and assets that a site is offering you, then we have to be honest, you will probably have to go with Artlist because it outperforms the other two sites by far when we just look at the sheer numbers. But oftentimes um, it's not purely about the numbers. Um, these sites, they, have, um, they will have different tracks available on them and depending on what your music taste is and what projects um, you're working on or will be working on in the future, what type of music you're looking for, you might be better off with one or the other. So I can just strongly recommend that you do browse through the libraries of all of these platforms um, and just 
listen to the songs, to a couple of these songs and see if, um, if the type of music that you can find on these platforms suits your needs. Just take a little time and do that and that's gonna be a lot more valuable I think rather than just going for the pure numbers. Because even with the 6,000 plus songs that, um, that audio has on there as the smallest library, you will still get a big variety of different songs on there and I think it's gonna last you for quite some time. Also, we need to mention that all of these platforms, they are still uploading and adding new music and sound effects every single day or at least every week. So all of their libraries are expanding and growing over time and you will just get more different types of songs, music and sound effects on there the longer um, you stick with them or the longer uh, they exist. So let's have a look at the ease of use next, the second category that we're looking at. And I can tell you that all of these sites, they're built pretty much the same way with a few minor differences. Now let's have a look at audio first. And if we look at them first, and if we uh, wanna go and browse the music section, for example, uh, you'll see that you get a selection side, you'll get some selection uh, parameters here on, the, on one side, and uh, you can pre uh, listen to all of the tracks that are listed here. So you can just click on it, you can listen to the track, you can go through those tracks and find the appropriate music that you're looking for. You have um, search functions, parameters for a specific mood, a genre, an instrument that you wanna have in your song, um, a video theme which can be useful, a build, I find that feature uh, particularly useful if you, you're you looking for a specific song that starts off slow, you know, and then keeps ascending and, uh, and uh, goes to like the, the, um, the fastest track, the fastest part of the track towards the end or towards the middle or whatever you need. You've also got your beats per minute, which again, I find a very useful parameter depending on um, how quick your song should be. And then you've got some extra uh, parameters there, like whether or not there should be vocals in your song, the duration, if you know you need a song that is a specific length, um, and then you've got your instrumental or um, your lyrics only. So pretty much the basic um, selection criteria there on the side. Switching over to Epidemic next, and again here we have a very similar picture that awaits us. Again, we've got a selection page uh, with all um, the different songs. Again, we can pre-listen to these songs here. We have um, a selection um, a selection tool that we can open up here when it comes to genres, moods, vocals, duration, beats per minute. Um, so that's uh, quite easy to find your way through there. And then also there is a selection which like the newest songs that have been added, um, just some extra selection uh, possibilities there, but basically pretty much the same as uh, with the audio um, selection process. And if we then go to the um, art list section, it is pretty much the same there as well. If we go, it's right here on the top to music, you will have uh, the music tracks listed here again. Same thing, you can listen to the music tracks there. And uh, you've got some selection criteria here. What I find a little bit disturbing, a little bit um, not quite ideal, um, in my opinion, is that some of the criteria are here on the side. And it took me actually a while to figure that out. Uh, some other criteria are here on the top. And I just didn't see them because I was just looking at the side here. But there's some other criteria um, over here. Sorry that this is in German, but it says uh, that you can sort it by uh, the picks of the team, by top downloads or the newest songs added. Um, you have also your beats per minute, your duration, um, and whether or not you want to have vocals or only instruments um, in your music track. So you can see even here, the selection page is pretty much identical. And I don't think it makes a big difference which of these sites you're going to be using to find your music. It's going to be kind of going through the same, the same process and it's going to be kind of uh, identical when it comes to the ease of finding um, specific tracks here on each of these um, sites. 
And last but not least, let's have a look at the criteria number three, which is the different pricing options these platforms do offer. Uh, I do think that the pricing is going to be the most deciding factor when it comes to going for either of these platforms for your music licensing needs. So let's have a look at the Epidemic Sound options first. Epidemic Sound has three different licensing models. Um, they have a personal option, a commercial and an enterprise option. Enterprise is obviously if you're a larger corporation, a company, you have multiple users that want to use the same account, then you can request a quote and depending on what you uh, exactly need, they will uh, give you a quote on what you'll have to pay for that. Uh, the personal one and the commercial one are probably the ones that you're going to be looking at, either one of those. The personal one only covers all your personal stuff. So you can download music and you can use it in your personal videos and on your personal um, social media channels, but you cannot use it for paid client work. If you've got paid client work and you want to use a song uh, in one of these projects, you will need to get the commercial um, the commercial subscription there. Now the commercial subscription will set you back uh, 240 euros a year and the personal subscription will set you back 132 euros a year, which is actually not too bad. It covers um, your music as well as your sound um, effects and uh, just make sure that uh, you don't run into any unexpected, um, unexpected licensing claims that way. Hopping over to Artlist and looking at the pricing there. And this is a little different here to the other two platforms because Artlist has, well, quite a big variety of different options that they offer there. They have something that they call just music and sound effects, which uh, is pretty much comparable to what you have on uh, um, Epidemic Sound and on audio. So that's why we're going to be looking at this section primarily. But they've also got something they call an all-in-one subscription, which also includes, in addition of your music and sound effects, it also includes stock footage, it includes templates, plugins, apps, anything that the platform has on offer and is available to download there. And then they've also got a, uh, a separate subscription if you don't need music and sound effects, but just footage and templates, you can also get a separate subscription for that. But again, that's not what we're really looking for. We're going to be looking at the music and sound effects section. So they have um, four different, um, different plans that they have on offer. One of them is their social music and sound effects package, which is very comparable to your personal package that we've seen at uh, Epidemic Sound. It costs $9.99, let's put it at 10 euros per month. So that's your uh, 120 euros a year. Again, you cannot use any of the downloaded music through that um, subscription for paid client work. Uh, then you've got your music and sound effects pro package, which does include all your commercial work, which does include client projects, paid client project and here we're looking at 16 euros 60 per month which turns out to be just under 200 euros a year so it's a little bit cheaper than the epidemic sound um, option artlist also has something in between the pro subscription and the enterprise subscription which again the enterprise is like with epidemic sound it's uh their uh, high-end solution the tailor-made solution so depending on how many team members you have and what exactly you need they will come up with a quote for you but artlist has something they call the music and sound effects team which is for two people so if you are a team of two you can get that license which will uh, then enable you for both of you to be using the same subscription to download um, music and sound effects and use them within your project whether that be personal projects or paid client work this um, license will cost 28.20 per month which sums up to be around 335 euros um, a year all right, let's have now a look at the last player in the field, Audio, and their 
um, subscription models and their pricing options. Now, Audio has a slightly different way of making up these packages. Uh, what they've created, what no one else has, so as far as I can tell, is that they've uh, got a lifetime music subscription available at the moment. And this is a limited time offer from what, I've, uh, uh, what, I, what I know, what I can tell. Um, which gives you a lifetime access to the music library. Um, it'll cost 499 US dollars, um, which seems to be a lot of money, but keep in mind that this will cover all your music licensing needs for pretty much the rest of your life. Um, unless you want to switch to another platform at some time in the future. But as long as you stay with audio, you will be covered for life and uh, this um, subscription also includes all the commercial use obviously there is some exceptions like for tv and stuff um, if you want to get licenses for that uh, it's uh, you got to get a, an upgrade a special license but that's the same with all the other um, suppliers out there as well but for your everyday basic needs for your personal needs for your clients needs for commercial use you are going to be fine with that lifetime music subscription. So that's definitely something to look into if you want to get uh, the most out, the most value for your money and you have the money to spend right now. Another option that they've got is their Audio Pro, which is basically the same as the commercial and the Pro uh, subscriptions with Epidemic or with Artlist. Here it costs $199 per year and it will cover the music and sound effect. And that's the little difference here because the lifetime music will only cover music, no sound effects, and the Audio Pro will cover music and sound effects for 12 months for $199, again, including your commercial licenses for client work, for your private projects, you name it. And then they've obviously also got the custom licensing, your enterprise solution. If you're a larger corporation, you need something specific, um, you can reach out to them and they'll be able to give you a price. Now, what is very interesting um, here with the audio subscription model is that right now, Audio has a incredible special offer going and you can get the pro subscription, the music and sound effects pro subscription for 12 months, one year for only 59 US dollars instead of the 199. So you're saving more than 70% on the regular price. And this really is, in my opinion, an absolute bargain and a no brainer that's less than $5 a month for your music and sound effects licensing for an entire year. So that's really, really a good deal. So well, what is my conclusion after having looked at the three different music licensing platforms? To be honest, I have already made up my mind. I will renew my subscription that I've got with audio.com. Currently, I have a music and sound effects pro package, the uh, one for $199 per year, and I will renew that at the reduced price of $59 for the upcoming year. I think this is a great offer and by far the best value for money that you can get out there on the market right now. If you too want to make use of that incredible offer that audio.com has on right now, use the link down in the video description below. I'll also put the coupon code next to it that you need to use to get the 70% discount special at checkout. If on the other side you want to check out the other sites, Epidemic Sound and Artlist, I'll also put links to those sites down in the video description below so you can go and check them out as well and decide which of these platforms is the best one for you. So hopefully this video was useful to you and you got some benefit out of it. And if that's the case, as always, please do hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet for more content in the future. Thank you so much, guys, for your time and for watching. Keep capturing your amazing underwater adventures and I will see you next Tuesday.